All right, welcome into another Harmonious at Lunch. It's lunch for one of us, but not the other one of us. I have a special guest today that I'm super excited to be chatting to. Uh, and as you join me, if you're watching this, I'm in a construction zone. So please apologize. I apologize for that. I'll be back to normal uh, on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. But uh, we're having a lot of fun over here, and I'm getting to know my guest, B. So first and foremost, B, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you. Hello, everybody from uh, Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, where it is 7.05 a.m. So breakfast time here, not lunch time. <laughs> it's harmonious all day. How about that? There's never a bad yeah. time to study the harmonious architecture and implement it in your business. So um, I'm super excited to have you here. And I just from, from chatting, uh, we've been best of friends now for about three and a half minutes, which is amazing. And um, <laughs> just to get to know your story a little bit, I think you have a story that resonates with a lot of entrepreneurs because it's unfortunately similar to most people's entrepreneurial journey. And I know both of us are out to solve that problem. So why don't you kind of go back a little bit and, and tell us, how did you, how did you get to this point? Like what was the, the last few years of your entrepreneurial journey like? Oh yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Yeah. It's, it's been a journey. So my background is advertising, marketing, 25 years. And you know, the, probably the last would be it was 14 years ago now but for 13 and a half years I I started and scaled a business so started you know one other person uh, and scaled it up to 19 plus million over a 13 and a half year period and obviously COVID hit us and we were the longest locked down uh, country in Australia well state in in the world Melbourne and so yeah I guess leading into COVID uh, as part of scaling, I was working 24 seven. And when I say 24 seven, it was literally seven days a week, you know, crazy hours, uh, living on adrenaline, loving the ride. But I started to notice that I was starting to feel really unfulfilled and that adrenaline and the excitement had started to wane and wear off. And obviously COVID hit and the business at the time, you know, we got hit as well. And so, you know, during that time, I made close to 45 redundancies. The business fell off a, a bit of a, um, it fell off its, you know, perch a little bit in terms of we lost a fair few pieces of business, which was beyond our control. And then so I probably had started to really wonder what was, you know, fulfilling me back to 2017 and then, the business had been uh, acquired by uh, a multinational company and so that, you know, but during that period I really did start to think about, well, what was next for me? And then last year in April uh, I opted to uh, to, to leave and uh, pursue my own venture, my own business as such. But what I didn't realise was when I finished is that I was, I crashed and burned and I completely just burnt out so yeah couldn't get out of bed best basically uh literally the only thing I kind of for, for quite a while there was really just getting up and grabbing a coffee and so I completely lost interest in absolutely everything and I was like what the hell is this who the hell am I uh and that's when my journey started to to going to the other side and going there's got to be another way to do this because this that what I've just experienced was just not sustainable and I see it amongst so many different you know uh, entrepreneurs people in corporates you know high-flying leaders and so yeah that's where um well I guess that's my story yeah and like I said it's it's unfortunately not a unique story but something I love was just just from watching you and and listening to you describe that journey your face lit up when you said you left this other company and you started your own venture. And then you kind of got more subdued when you started talking about how burnt out you were. You, you can see it visibly on your face, in your voice when you talk about it. And I think that's that's so powerful. If if you're not feeling like that, something's wrong. Like that's that's really what needs to come out as the lesson because so many people work themselves to death, sometimes literally, and we can't be doing that as entrepreneurs. So no. now that you have this this new company, this new venture, what's your what's your mission moving forward to help people? Yeah, my mission is is to be a, a catalyst for positive change. And I know you know that's quite a common term, but it, it really is essentially a catalyst for positive change. 
what I, my business is called Be Formless. And if you think about when you are in, uh, in a role or when you're on the hamster wheel, you're in what I call like a very fixed form and it's very rigid. You're holding on for dear life. You're trying to control absolutely everything, you're trying to hit your numbers. You're trying to be the best you possibly can. You're trying to keep your team happy and you're just, you're just controlling everything. And that's when, when you're controlling everything, you're not allowing the unknown or you're not allowing things to happen the way they should just happen. And so that's essentially what was me. My whole life was 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 completely controlled. And so when it became almost out of control when I finished and, like, I literally fell off and jumped off a cliff, as I started to do a lot of research, I've been doing quite a bit of research for the last few years about what I wanted to do. I, I guess, I became formless in in the sense of I had to become shapeless. I had to, you know, be like water in terms of well, how do I how do I reshape who I am? How do I reshape? A bit, how do I reshape what the corporate world could look like in terms of, you know, that new optimised form? How do we get into an optimised form where we can, you know, ensure that within our business or within ourselves that we are sustainably growing? You know, we're, we're not having to work 24-7 to scale to X amount. We have high-performing teams. Ourselves as individuals, we're ensuring that we've got a healthy diet. We're getting at least, you know, seven to eight hours sleep a night. We're actively recovering. And what I mean by actively recovering is, you know, we're going, we're doing the hot yogas, we're going for the walks, we're doing the infrareds, we're meditating. We're not just passively recovering where we're sitting on the couch because we're so exhausted and just watching a good Netflix series. And so my business is really, you know, on a mission and me personally is to to show people another way, to show businesses, teams and individuals that there is another way to to be sustainable in business and life and and you can and you can be fulfilled and like love everything that you do but ensuring that you're not just working for no purpose and there's mm. meaning to what you do. Yeah, that's that's so key. And I, I asked you that question because for us, that's where we always start with people is is what's your mission? And I think a lot of a lot of people get that wrong in business where they start because they're either good at a process, uh, some sort of the fulfillment, or they want to make money. But at the end of the day, that's where burnout comes from if, is if you're not serving your mission. So that's the navigation portion of the harmonious architecture. Um, and and like I said, I asked you that on purpose because I can always tell when I'm talking to people, you are out to solve the injustice in the world, as I call it, of people burning out and running themselves into the ground. And I love that. I know you will be successful because you're fighting that battle. And that's how you show up yeah. every day. So I, I absolutely yeah. love that. And then the other thing you touched on too, which is super important, is what we call serenity. Typically, people call that time management. I don't know how you could ever manage time because it's something that can't be controlled. That's why we call it serenity. So it's managing your calendar and setting up your day for your personal success and optimization. If you're Elon Musk and you want to work 22 hours a day, more power to you. Most people can't. So how do you set that up and, and actually be efficient and purposeful with your time? So so B, do you have some, um, I know you mentioned a, a list of, of tactics and, and things you can do to really be the best you, but what do you what do you recommend as far as you know setting your calendar up and making sure your day oh my gosh. looks I love, right for each I love person. that you brought that up. Well, sorry, Brandon, but I love that you brought that up because do you know how many businesses and individuals that I work with and I'm like, let's look at your schedule. And like that's one of my starting points, right? And they look at me and they're like, what are you talking about? Like yeah. you're in the weeds, you're you're in the process. And I'm like, no, 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 let's start there. And it's the most simple, basic thing, but yet so many people aren't set up for success when I look at their schedules. And, you know, you, you know this, but reactive versus proactive. And so, you know, they're running from meeting to meeting, you know, they're literally on from the minute they wake up and they're on to the, to the moment they go to bed. So there's no power up in the morning for them or, you know, just to kind of regroup and there's no power down. So what I like to do is it's one of the first things I do is as I assess, well, look, what what is what's going on in your world? What's going on in, in your world as as the individual, but also as a team or the business? 
and then I, I look at, well, let's have a look at the schedule and, and what's what's serving you and what's what's no longer serving you. And so we really like to, I like to block schedules in terms of block time versus, you know, like have, it, like you say, like you can't, you can't control time. So rather than having it by the hour, I like to block out time where there's deep work. There's obviously, you know, meetings, times for client meetings, team meetings, but also just having that, um, you know, what I call flow blocks. So where you can actually get into this optimal state where you can perform and feel your best. And that's where you are doing work that is effortless, but also just, you know, you're losing track of time because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just in the zone. Um, and so essentially, yeah, like I, what I like to do is look at the schedule and go, all right, how do we make this more optimized? And it's quite amazing when clients start to block their schedules out and they realize how much more um, optimized actually can be and less reactive and more proactive, but also controlling their own schedule and starting to set the boundaries around when they're available, you know, protecting their time, if you like. Yeah, that's huge too, because I think as, as entrepreneurs and especially in the hustle culture that we're in, that most of us hate so much, it's, it's always like, do, 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 just keep going and going and working harder. Mm -hmm. And that's what gets us to the state you're describing. So obviously that system is broken. We know the corporate system is broken. You mentioned getting into a flow state and that's, I know that's a popular term. Do you have some sort of a formula or framework to promote that? Because I think what prohibits a lot of people from getting there is even though the time is blocked on the calendar, their head isn't clear. And even though you have time to be in flow, you have a thousand things going on. So what do you recommend as far as mm -hmm. getting to that point? Yeah, it's a good question. So uh, I've created a model, uh, which is, a, you know, a proprietary model in terms of the whole learn, unlearn, relearn. But my, my business is, I'll get to that in a second, but it really is around subtraction focused um, services. And what I mean by that is it's, it's based around subtractive psychology. So we as individuals, human beings, we have where, I guess we're ingrained to continuously add to our brains when we're thinking about problems we need to solve. Uh, you know, anything we do, we have this tendency to, to add something so that, because we think that's the way that we can answer it. But actually what that does is it just essentially creates cognitive overload. And so that's where we lose the clarity and I guess the space to be able to get, you know, think straight, uh, be able to get curious, to be able to get into this flow state. So what I like to do is I like to learn what's what's going on in, in you know, the individual, the business or the team in terms of, well, let's look at the processes, let's look at, you know, what is everything that you've got if that is happening and what can we start to like subtract, eliminate that we don't need any longer so that we can almost remove that cognitive overload to be able to then allow ourselves to have the clear focus to be able to then get into what is this flow state because if you're if you're in that mindset where you've got the cognitive overload you've got a fixed mindset where you're trying to control everything you're never ever going to get into a flow state so it's for example waking up in the morning you know we have this tendency to jump straight to our phones and you know check all our emails check you know whether it's teams whatever messaging channel we've got what if we just didn't? What if we just completely got up um, and started doing some, you know, getting into a flow state, whether it's you've got to write something or you've got something that you need to complete, but without going and checking all the technology and all the distractions and actually just throwing yourself straight into it. That's when you get into a flow state. You can't just get into it, you know, all the time you've got to pick your moments but also knowing when you're removing that that cognitive overload and being aware of it being aware when you are overloaded and knowing okay what's going on here what do i have to subtract remove to allow me to have that clear space yeah that's great or what if we get up first thing in the morning and talk to some crazy guy on the east coast of the united states i don't know maybe maybe that is for you what well, you're yeah. doing right now that's awesome i, I love well, that I feel like I'm, I'm in a, 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I mean, to be honest, I feel like I'm in a flow state right now. I feel like we're having one because, you know, like it's just flowing, right? We're just having this conversation and that's what it's about, you know. You know, they, I've I've listened to podcasts and I think it's Ultra Speaking. I don't know if you've heard of them, but they're, they're a US-based business. But they talk about, you know, I love it. They talk about um, think before you speak. Uh, we're always told um you know speak no speak before you think well so this is where I'm still catching up from the morning but you know, we're always <laughs> told um we're always told to think before you speak but they talk about speak before you think and that's even getting into flow right rather than thinking about it adding to the it's just giving it a go <laughs> yeah that's awesome so b i put your website on the screen here bformless.com tell me what is a definitely go there and check out b if any of this resonates you but what is what is it that you hope all of your clients achieve from working with you yeah so i i i really hope that and i really resonate with anyone who is feeling like they've lost their purpose or their meaning and they don't know where to look or where to go to or i really resonate with anyone who has has suffered burnout and lost their identity and working through well, what's next uh so by working with me, what I will work with you on is getting you back to loving life again and loving what you do in terms of business, but also redefining how successful your business can be, but in a sustained way, in a sustained manner. And it's all through optimal performance. So, yeah, essentially, you know, you'll, you'll thrive, not just survive uh, by working with me. Wow. I don't know of a better sales pitch ever, right? You'll thrive instead of just surviving. Well, listen, if any of this resonated with you, go check out beformless.com. B has way cooler glasses than me, and she has an amazing smile when she talks about her new venture, which I'm so excited for. So Thank I you. can't wait to follow you on this journey too. Um, so let's real quick, we're going to tie this all to the harmonious architecture, and then we'll come back with one final question. But uh, you know, I, I jumped in a little bit. We had some, some navigation there, but a, a lot of what's present here for me is both inspire and home. So inspire in terms of leadership, how you show up. If you're not showing up in your peak self as a leader, how could you ever lead or inspire a team to take action behind you? Whether you have a, a large team of a couple hundred or you're just managing a couple of VAs, anywhere in that scale, you have to show up and inspire people to take action and chase the mission and vision of the company, which is back to the navigation portion. So if you're feeling any sort of burnout and listen, I personally have been there too. I know B story, like I said, it's, it's unfortunately not unique. A lot of people go through this, but you need to figure out how to get past it. And this is a perfect person mm -hmm. to contact if you want to get to that next, next level. And then also I mentioned home humans optimize in a meaningful environment. So many people go through their days at their jobs and they're just task rabbits and they're completing checklists yeah. over and over with no meaning behind it. Please, for the sake of your team, for the sake of your company, figure out how to optimize yourself and how to optimize your team so that your company can actually make an impact and a meaningful difference in the world. And that's about it. I mean, this, this conversation really does touch all 10 of the disciplines in the harmonious architecture. So that's why it's, it's so important. And like I said, so many people go through it. So if this resonates with you, please go check out B. Um, now, just from talking before this show, I know I heard you have a new website launching. Um, tell yeah. us what's what's coming up for you and what you're super excited about over over the next couple of months, B. Yeah. Okay. So like lots actually. Like yeah. So my new website's live in a in a couple of weeks, and so there'll be a lot more uh, exciting uh, information on my website, but also well, you know what's coming ahead next year. So uh, unfortunately, oh no, actually. So I, I'm doing some live events, but I'll also have them live streamed. So that's really exciting, and I'm doing a series starting in in January of next year. And really just kind of going, really dialing up and, you know, kind of really focusing on getting people to join the Be Formless community so that we can make a difference uh, and join the mission to make a difference and, and change, make positive impact in the world on redefining and reshaping what it is, um, you know, to to live and work in in a rapidly changing world so that's really what i'm excited about so yeah lots lots happening and yeah the website going live in two weeks will be a game changer with much happening kicking off from january of next year that's so awesome well thank you for coming on this has been fantastic and, and a much needed conversation so i hope we open some eyes again 
if if you think you need this and actually i have a way that i can tell if you need it i'll put it on the screen go to whatif.com take our bad assessment it'll identify if you're weak in leadership in home in serenity if you need help in these areas I have someone to send you to. Her name's B, and she's been a phenomenal guest. So thank you again, B, for coming. And we'll see thank you next you. time on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thank you.